transformation is never going to happen because for most of the people it's life as usual. They just keep waking up in the morning, keep making new projects, keep feeling miserable and all these things, the cycle never changes. So when the transformation happens only to the people who are ready. So, <clears throat> so if you could be an emperor and living in the future, you are a beggar. And you could be a very poor person living in the present, you are an emperor. So it, again, it's a state of mind. So it's not always measured by the whatever your material success has been. Right? So future does not exist. So asking something from the future is also a speculation. So you don't have all the facts how the future is going to pan out to be. And yet you keep on asking for things, right? So you're living in the future. So you're missing out the present moment and you're looking, thinking about the future, you're gambling. It's a gamble. So banking on the future, something will happen. You're playing a game of a gamble and sacrificing your present moment, the fun, right? So, <clears throat> and when you gamble, again, you're a beggar because again, you're asking for life to give you something and you put yourself down to that low level. The example of a, a friend of ours who caught cheating, mm -hmm. playing timpati with friends, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> because he was banking on making more out of timpati. And then friends found him cheating. Right. Now this is, these are friends. Right. I mean, they're playing for <laughs> a few <laughs> here and there. Not, fun. not really, yeah. yeah. So he sacrificed the potential of good time with his friends now, he will never be invited, obviously. <laughs> it th silly things. But I'm just saying, when you live for the future, you want to acquire for the future, instead of enjoying the present moment, mm -hmm. and that's what life is about, there are always risks, right? So, present moment, like I always say, is the only real moment. Future has not happened. So, this is the only moment which is full of consciousness. Your consciousness, my consciousness and whatever consciousness is pouring in around us, this is the only alive moment that we can live. And we cannot know, we can only live this moment. And that's what we should do. But instead of living, we're conceptualizing the future, okay. we're regretting the past, we're thinking about the future, we're making the plans for the future, this and that and all that, missing out the present moment completely. So, <clears throat> there are a lot of miserable people, uh, but these are the people who are so busy making plans for the future, they never turn to religion. Because religion is all about something unimaginable. The God is formless. God has no shape, no size, nirgun, niraka. So they are so used to handling the material things. So they never come to religion. Once in a while you find miserable people coming into religion, but that also because they have hopes of getting and something out of God. Them, right? And need help. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah. So they turn to God because they say, God will do something for me. You know, they say, well, rupiya ka nariya chala diya. So, Hanuman ka bo, like, bache ko pass kar dena. Exam, right. So, again, they're looking for material things. So, they have never really left the material world. In their mind, is still material. So, true journey into spirituality has never started. So, <clears throat> That's why a miserable man will, will never even commit a suicide because he still has hopes out of life. That's, life will do something for me. So, <clears throat> very few people turn to religion because they're happy. So they have, my, all the jobs are taken care of. Materially, I'm secure. My wife is healthy. My son is on the right track, this and that. But I want to do something more. I want to explore. I want to know myself, what I'm made up of. I have curiosity about life. So I'm happy with everything. I don't want anything. These are the people when they go to Samadhi or to Paramatma, they will not ask for anything. Prarthana is something to offer yourself rather than ask for something. Right? Asking for something is, is begging. So these are the people who didn't come to spirituality looking for some miracles or looking for some personal gains. That's where the spirituality is gets washed out right there and then. Because your goal is material. That has nothing to do with spirituality. Mm -hmm. That's a good example they gave. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> in uh, Jain temple. Right. Uh, when you go to India and all the at uh, the traffic light, right, right, right. All these beggars comes. What you do? You put the window up, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to Mandir, how many people come and ask? Right. He must be putting the window up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Everybody is asking for something. So. So people who come to religion with expectations, they're going to do a lot of mechanical things. They're going to write Ram, 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 Ram for millions of times. They're going to chant all these things. They're going to do all these tilaks and here and there and with the hope that they will get something. Again, the hope is all about future. So they are doing it for the wrong purpose. So their whole direction is in the wrong way. The more, so that way, the more happy you are, the more you are ready to give up life. The more miserable you are, the more you want to hold on to, because you want something out of life. You have hope out of life. But when you are happy, you don't care. Not that you want to die, but if death comes, you're, it's okay. Mm. It's not so bad, because life has been good, and have enjoyed everything. And if anything, if it has to happen, has to happen. So. There is no fear of death. So, <clears throat> actually what happens is that the, it goes the other way around. When you are happy, you become really free from demands of life, demands of mind. You don't necessarily looking for anything from life. So even when the death comes, you look at it just as another event because you have realized your potential. You have realized your formless self, that you have experienced your true nature, which is transcended by the material because material things are going to keep on changing, including your body, your thoughts, your intellects, your ideas, everything will keep on changing. But your true formless self that you would have experienced in Samadhi will be transcending everything because death will come only to the body. So you literally become deathless. You become amur, right? So death doesn't bother you. You transcend death. The problem is with the is only with the miserable people, because miserable people, they want to cling to life. Now clinging is not fun. It's ugly. It's like literally, I'm trying to put my hand into Bakulbai's pocket and I want, <laughs> please give me, <laughs> please give me thousand dollars. It's ugly. You're not doing anything and you still want something, right? So, once you're miserable, you cling to life. And the more you cling to life, the more miserable you get. It's like a vicious circle. And the pocket empty, so I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's Wrong the, pocket. so, it's the second part. Okay. It's the other part of the whole equation is that by being more miserable, more clinging to the life, you become more miserable, more frustration build up, and it's like an escalation. There is no end to that. So, when you don't cling to something, and you lose it, you don't feel so bad. Chances are that the more you have been clinging to the life, <coughs> and the more desires and demands you have put in front of life, chances are that guaranteed 80, 90 percent of them are not going to be fulfilled. You're going to be frustrated. And you're going to be frustrated because you wanted those things in the first place. Like thousands of girls and boys, you know, they break up. Thousands of girlfriends break up. But if your girlfriend breaks up, then you have lots of problems because you wanted her. So your desire for her gives you, makes you more miserable. If somebody else's girlfriend breaks up, oh yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, this and that, but you move on. But if your girlfriend breaks up from you, then you have major problem. So, these people who are miserable, they have wanted so much out of life and the life did not give it to them. Because they want it, they are more miserable. Versus the somebody who is happy, who never wanted in the first place, whatever he gets is a gift. Right. Whatever he, because he never wanted anything. He never wanted anything. He didn't get whatever he wanted because he never wanted. So there is no frustration build up. So it's like an unending cycle with miserable people. With the happy people, there is nothing to worry about. They don't have to go through this vicious cycle. <coughs> So if the girlfriend comes, it's happy. If she leaves, you're happier. Exactly. <laughs> That's called enlightenment. That's called enlightenment. <laughs>
<laughs> but it comes only after the hair hair becomes grey. <laughs> then girl fresh don't leave. Girl fresh don't come. First girl fresh leave because you have bald head. But now they don't leave even though you have bald. <laughs> ऑफ <laughs> 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 we never enjoyed the nuances of life we never enjoyed the delicate moments of life and now you look at somebody else who has done it and he looks so happy and now you become more desperate to live life but not realizing what you're doing is itself is the <coughs> cause of suffering right so <clears throat> if the reason we are really miserable because we cling more the more we cling the more we miserable so it's a vicious circle right so how do you explain the loss of a loved one loss of a loved one <laughs> physical loss like a death or something like that it's have to be into spirituality to understand i had a patient uh, i had a patient uh, i have talked about it in the past he, the thing is that the loss is perceived only at the mind level the mind created those connections which were never there it's an illusion it's an illusion of the mind so when the mind thinks that it had a connection and now the loss happens the the hurt also takes place exactly at the spot where you felt that you were connected but if the connection was never perceived as a real connection then it's never a problem so that's why the your knowledge of yourself existence comes into hand into the picture i had a patient we talked about it in the past Uh, named robert he came to me and he says doc give me some xanax i said what happened he says uh, we had a marriage of 10 years and my my wife died and then i had a girlfriend for 3 years and she left me and i have teenagers boy and a girl but they they're busy in their own way i have nobody to talk <coughs> to i'm missing them and give me some xanax so i can feel a little better so i asked him I said you eat apple he says yes apple has carbon atom in it yes and then you inhale you inhale oxygen yes so who made that oxygen nobody it was made by god who made that carbon atom who made that apple god you ate the apple you breathe out you breathe out carbon dioxide carbon came oxygen came carbon dioxide goes So meanwhile what did that apple do for you give you some energy right what's going to happen to that carbon atom once it goes into the atmosphere maybe some other tree will pick it up and will make another apple maybe i'll eat that apple that carbon molecule will come into my body right so we inhale all the time we exhale all the time we drink we urinate we eat defecate continuous process is going on the skin cells keep on shedding hairs keep on growing liver cells multiply nothing really stays there so there is a, it's a constant continuous inflow and outflow of the molecules <coughs> and material from outside scientifically we've been proven 85% of the body material is recycled at the end of one year two years 100% <laughs> so same robert which was there two years ago you look at yourself in the mirror is not the same robert that's now and another two years another robert will pop up but you keep on thinking there's the same robert now that shows your body is not yours you have no control on it if your body is not yours i asked him what makes you think that girlfriend was yours <laughs> what makes you that that wife was yours what makes you think those children are yours so there is nothing yours we create those connections we imagine in those connections and when they get cut off we get upset so we all came by ourselves we are born by ourselves we're going to die by ourselves when you came in you can care less if you had clothes on or not right. society can stand you without clothes so they gave you clothes <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you had a social security number given to you which was recycled from somebody who died before right so your social security was not number was not given yours but yet all the life you live what's your social security number oh, yeah. 
You write it even down your name is <laughs> given to you. What's that? Even your name is even given. Even your name is given to you. Right. Even you are told that you are Jain or Hindu or Muslim right. or something. Right. If you were told something else, you would believe that too. Right. And yet, and you would exactly at the min, middle of night they wake you up and say, "What's your religion? Oh, I'm a Jain. I'm a Hindu." I'm, you know, it's like goes by heart basically. Right. So we live by we lo- live our life with all the things given to us by other by other people, the society. So there's no, nothing is yours. The only thing that's yours is the soul that you came with. Your soul is the only thing that's you. So I told Robert, I said, so two years down the road, five years down the road, ten years down the road, there is one person who will be with you all the time. Who is that? He says, I know, Robert. <laughs> right. Robert will be with you all the time. Right. I said, so that's all you need. He right. says, Doc, you're right. I don't need Xanax. <laughs> he left. Yeah. And then two weeks later, his mom calls. He says, Doc, what did you tell Robert? I, <laughs> I said, I didn't say anything. I said, I gave him peace of mind. My peace of my mind, you know. He says, he's a different person. He's so confident. And he's, he's really feeling good. Mm-hmm. I said, thanks for calling. <laughs> so, so, so those things were not in medicine book. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. This was totally more so than... So that was a counselor job, <laughs> not, <laughs> not a doctor job. So... Uh, no insurance company pay for that. <laughs> yeah, actually, yesterday, uh, Bharat Bhai, actually, I have read that letter before also from Reader's Digest, but one of our friends, Bharat Bhai, he sent an email yesterday, but something similar. Mm-hmm. A psychologist writes a letter to his son right. about practical fact of life. Mm-hmm. And he was saying the same thing, that don't get uh, too much attached to love and also sadness. When your girlfriend comes in, you get over jealous with right. love that she is going to be a beautiful woman. Sure, sure. Here. And then she leaves and you feel very exactly. sad. So don't over-attach right. either way. Right, Life exactly. Life go on. Right. Today I'm here as your father. I, I don't expect you to support me when I'm in a nursing home. I'll take care of myself. Sure. And I'm also not going to support you <laughs> for the rest of your life. Whether you want to drive a limousine or you uh, ride on a bus, that's your choice. Sure. It's a very nice letter about, right, right. <coughs> thing about love and, sure. and not getting attached and you know, keep everything yeah. detached. That's what Jin Chandra Maharaj says. There. You can Bado, share the email. Yeah, yeah, nice. Saban Bado, Saban Bado, Bado, you live your life, but always realize, always remember your true swaroop. That you are boundless, you are infinite. Right. You are. You have to experience that nature of yours, and then only you can do all these things. Then from that level, you become an observer, and things happen. I. Uh, I mean, the question I asked is because I read a Facebook message from one of my uh, professor, who lost her 20, 21 year old son in India, and then uh, the way I was so stunned the way she wrote it, and that's why I asked you this question because she lost her son, she grieved over it. And then, uh, you know, and then she was in a silence for almost 20 days or something like that. And then after the 21st day or something, she comes back and she puts the same message on the Facebook saying that with her, it's a message to her, you know, uh, died son. And then she says, like, I'm so, you know, I'm, I, oh, my only wish is that I'll be born again to you as your daughter or something. And then in this Janma, I'm going to. I'm going to live my life to finish all the missions which you wanted to do and something like that. These are so, all these are all religious. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> created by <laughs> some people don't know and they just see. These are again. Uh, I guess you came a little later, but this is what basically saying the misery generates hopes only with the as a compensatory mechanism. The more miserable you are, the more illusions and dreams like this you're going to create. Creating. Right. Instead of accepting what it is, and that acceptance never, acceptance never comes. And, and these are the people who will always stay miserable because they want something out of life. And yes, I have heard all these things that, okay, my mother is dead and my grandma is dead and then is she going to be born as this and this and then they keep looking for them and <laughs> well, all their life, right? To, to, to <laughs> else's life. Still she's not, yeah. She has not accepted, not accepted, obviously. So that's why the suffering will go, go on, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, that's the chain of events we want to break and that's what Patanjali is saying and, and that's where we're going to go in more into detail. There was a story of uh, a, a king called Yayati and he had story says, uh, it's from Upanishad time, he had a thousand sons. And he lived a full life to be hundred. And when the death came, this is a separate topic, I have to move on. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm talking about, talking about the clinging to the life mm-hmm. and what the life has to offer. And it still is parallel to that because even if your son may be dead or your mother may be dead, you still want the life to give something back as a compensation, right? So, 
he didn't want to die. The dad is knocking on the door. So he says, give me some more time. Uh, the dad says, you have been an emperor. You have fought so many battles. You have accumulated so much wealth. It does not suit you to be an emperor and cry like a beggar looking for more life. So Yayati says, I understand all that, but I have not enjoyed my life. I've been so busy fighting all these battles and accumulating all that. I never had a time to enjoy my life. I really want to do that. So death says that the only way I am here, I have to take someone. You have thousand sons, you can ask them if somebody is ready to die for you instead of you. Then I, I don't mind. So they asked the sons. Some of the sons were in 70s, but they were in the same boat. They were into holding, accumulating, and clinging to life, being miserable. So they never wanted to give up because they thought that something will be offered by the life. I would offer queens. <laughs> 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 so the older sons said no. So there was finally one son who was 16, 17 year old. He became ready. He says, I, I can die. So the death goes to him and he says in his ears, are you stupid or what? I mean, you're only 17 year old. You have a full life to live. Why would you want to, want to give up? He says, if my father lived to be 100 and he's still miserable, <laughs> I'm getting the picture of the rest of the He says, it's not worth it. So I, I don't mind dying. So he dies. And Yayati got another 100 years. So another 100 years passes and the same story. I still have not lived my life. Take my another son. It goes on for 10 sons. He lives to be 1,000 years old, and the story never ends. Right. So the moral is that the more and more you keep on postponing, the more and more you keep on hoping for the future to give you, deliver you the happiness, right. it's not going to come. Right. The happiness is here and right now. And this is the time to enjoy, and this is what the life has to offer. Very good one. I'm not done. Very nice one. I'm not done yet. <laughs>